some pasta is better store-bought. Like spaghetti, for instance. Unless you have some very sophisticated equipment, you can't make it at home. Even if you do have an extruder, it's usually better to just go buy it anyway. But the pasta we're talking about today has to be made fresh by hand. Sure, you can sometimes find it in a store, but it's usually pretty awful, and it certainly doesn't even come close to the real deal. Today, Ava's gonna share everything you need to know to make perfect, light, fluffy, delicious gnocchi. It's a simple pasta, but there are quite a few myths out there that need to be debunked. It's really important to season the mixture as we go along, otherwise the gnocchi becomes really bland. And the first thing we need to get straight is, what the heck are gnocchi? When Italians talk about gnocchi, 90% of the time they're referring to a pasta made with potatoes. That wasn't always the case though. As we all know, potatoes are a relatively recent addition to the European diet but gnocchi are very old, they go back to the Middle Ages. You see, the word gnocchi just means dumplings, and there are many different kinds of dumplings. For centuries, Italians made gnocchi out of milk and eggs and cheese and flour and breadcrumbs and cake and marzipan, pretty much anything they could get their hands on they were putting into gnocchi. Even today, there are versions of gnocchi that don't have any potatoes in them, like gnocchi alla romana, totally potato-less. But after the potato came to Europe from the Americas, it wasn't very long before it completely dominated all other kinds of gnocchi. Yeah, it's that good. For that reason, we're focusing on potato gnocchi today, and that means we need to choose our potatoes. Gnocchi are good if potatoes are good. And what I discovered being the best potatoes here in America to make the gnocchi is russet potatoes. Usually one medium potatoes like this one is enough for making one serving of gnocchi. But I always recommend to make a little bit more because uh, who never knows in life. It's obvious that to make our gnocchi we need to cook before the potatoes. I'm going to boil them and be sure that when you boil potatoes you boil them skin on because the water is the worst enemy of a good gnocchi and we don't want potatoes soaked, uh, so soak? Soak. soak in the water. We want very dry potatoes. Even better, it's uh, if your potatoes are old potatoes. And why? Because when they are old, they lost some of their water. Which means that if you have a potato that is sitting there in your kitchen uh, since, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, that is the best potato to use for making gnocchi. The way in which you know that your potatoes are cooked is when you can easily stick a knife uh, inside. Depending on the size of your potatoes, it can take about 45 minutes to one hour of time. And now we need to peel our potatoes, and I'm really sorry, but one of these little uh, peelers uh, don't work. Do kids in Italy ever play a game called hot potato? Sì. Now that the potatoes are cooked, it's time to actually start making the gnocchi. Mie making the gnocchi. Making the gnocchi. But first, we need to thank today's video sponsor, Raycon. We all have parts of our daily routine that, let's be honest, get a little menial. Having something to listen to, whether it's a podcast or music, really helps those moments fly by. That's why Ava and I use Raycon earbuds. Whether it's working out here, maybe doing dishes, cleaning the house. It's nice having this friendly little companion that keeps you entertained. Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point. Yeah, they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. They have all the features I'm looking for, like noise isolation, so I can really concentrate on what I'm listening to. Also the opposite, which is awareness mode, so if you're like out walking on the street, you can hear a car coming. Best of all are the enormous number of earbud tips that it comes with. We have legitimately tried to find a pair of earbuds that fit Ava's ear for years. It wasn't until we found Raycon that they finally fit. Raycon wants to make sure you love your new earbuds as much as I do, which is why every purchase has an easy and free return guarantee. Having these guys with you makes a big difference in your daily routine. Ready to buy something small that has a big impact? Visit the link down in the description below or go to buyraycon.com slash pastagrammer and you'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase. A big thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. 
You can make your potato in every way you like. I really enjoy doing with this uh, that is called... Uh, a potato ricer? Okay, in Italian it's called the schiaccia patato. And you're just doing it right here on the cutting board. Because then we need to mix the potatoes with the, with the flour. Now we start to add all-purpose flour. There is no precise amount of flour because every potato is different, so you need to fill the dough. You need to add as little flour as possible, just enough uh, that your dough is not sticky anymore. Usually when you make a dough, a pasta dough, more you need it, the better it is. In case of gnocchi, it's completely the opposite. We need to work this dough as little as possible. At this point, our dough is not ready, as you can see. It's all uh, crumbled and it's uh, pretty sticky. So I'm going to add a little bit more flour. It's still a little bit sticky, so it needs a little bit more flour. Now our dough is ready. As you can see, it's not sticky anymore. I don't think they can see that. <laughs> but I can confirm it's not tacky anymore. <laughs> Believe me, it's not sticky anymore. So you didn't add any egg? No, I didn't add any egg because the real potato gnocchi are potatoes and flour. I know that uh, there are people that, who had uh, an egg, or depending on how much they are making, maybe two. But the egg is just, um, how can I say this in a polite way? Okay, it's just a tool used by the people who doesn't know how to make gnocchi. I'm enough polite. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Because it's hard to work with all these uh, at once, uh, I'm going to cut a little, uh, a small batch of dough and I start to roll them. Eat. Eat them. <laughs> It'll become them soon. See, si, well, still now it's it though. This is the thickness that I like for my gnocchi, which means that uh, it's like uh, this uh, finger. <laughs> you see how thick is my finger? Okay, this is the precise amount, precise thickness. Measure. We need to cut the gnocchi. I like my gnocchi being more or less this size. Some people leave the gnocchi just like that, uh, and this is uh, absolutely a uh, finished gnocco. Then uh, there are other people that instead make the fridges. This is a gnocchi board, and I'm going to use this to make the ridges of my gnocchi. These gnocchi boards are actually a very versatile tool. They're not just for gnocchi. You can make all different kinds of pasta with them, like garganelli and spizzolus. We'll put a link below to the one we use. So you take a gnocco, then put here, and gently press it. How beautiful it is. Using a gnocchi board gives you the chance to make these ridges that help the gnocchi to keep more sauce. And most, you have this hole that once the gnocchi is cooked, it will be full of good sauce. If you don't have a gnocchi board, you can always use a fork. It's very important that you place your gnocchi in a towel covered in flour and be sure that your gnocchi didn't 
touch each other because otherwise they will stick. I notice you're pretty much dusting them almost constantly in flour. See, Arpil, because uh, dusting them with flour uh, avoid uh, to make them uh, stick all together. Maybe my favorite pasta to make. You kind of get into the rhythm and it becomes a, almost a little bit meditative. Gnocchi can be served and eaten in a whole bunch of different ways. One of my personal favorite preparations is gnocchi with pesto. It's the perfect combination. In Liguria, where pesto is from, usually pesto is served with potatoes. Pesto and potatoes go together like... We say culo e camicia in Italian. What? Culo e camicia. Culo e camicia? Means a perfect pair. Doesn't that mean butt and shirt? Si. They go together like a butt and a shirt? Mm -hmm. How do those go together? I don't know, but... Sono come culo e camicia. <laughs> Means that they are very close together, they are best They friends. go together really well. This is a very simple recipe because what we need is some good pesto, some good gnocchi, and some good parmigiano cheese. We don't cook the pesto. What we are going to do is just add a little bit of hot water to make it a little bit more saucy. <laughs> Think it makes sense? Yeah. It's my own English, it's saucy. The water is boiling, so now is the moment in which we can cook our gnocchi. You need to be very, very careful. So you need to close the towel like that. Be sure that all the gnocchi are at the bottom and pay attention because they can splash. Be sure that all the gnocchi is inside. <laughs> very, very delicate. You should move the gnocchi to be sure that they are not stick at the bottom of the pot. So they don't stick together, but very gentle because it's like uh, they are very delicate. I'm picking up a theme, which is that stickiness is about the worst thing when it comes to gnocchi. It's the worst enemy of gnocchi. <laughs> you don't want the dough to stick. You don't no. want the pieces to stick together. You don't want them to no. stick to the pot. Gnocchi is one of the easiest types of pasta to cook because the pasta itself literally tells you when it's ready. You don't need to worry about timers or anything. As soon as the gnocchi float to the surface of the water, they're done. You just skim them off, you're ready to go. It's probably worth noting how quickly these cooked. It was like See. a few seconds. Yes, because it's like potatoes, they are cooked though. Always very gentle, you mix them with the pesto. Some parmigiano, why not? It's never enough. If you've only had store-bought gnocchi, or even if you've had gnocchi with egg in it, you can't understand how absolutely light and fluffy these are. It's not chewy, doesn't stick to the top of your mouth. It's just like a pillow of fluffy potatoes. Arper, but are you going to eat all of them? Do you want some? Let's see, Arper. Okay, one more bit. You know that a gnocco is good when 
they are soft but you can bite a little bit they don't stick at the palate they don't dissolve too quickly like just about every pasta shape out there gnocchi goes amazingly well with a simple tomato sauce We'll put a link down below for Ava's tomato sauce recipe. As I did for the past, also this time with tomato sauce, I'm going to use a bowl to mix tomato sauce and gnocchi. You know that usually with the pasta you don't do this, but because the gnocchi they are very, very delicate, we need to stir them very, very gently. This is my favorite way of eating gnocchi. Because yes, they are good with pesto. But how they are good with tomato sauce. You're right. It's like Kulo e Kamicha. Bravo, Arber. It's like Kulo e Kamicha. You know, Eva, we've got a bunch of gnocchi, a bunch of tomato sauce. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Si, sí, Arber. One of the most classic dishes that is made with gnocchi, specifically in Campania, is a baked pasta dish called gnocchi alla sorrentina. Gnocchi alla sorrentina is uh, an amazing dish when you make uh, on purpose. But then it's, always, it's also a very good dish that you can make when you have leftover gnocchi, if it happens that you have leftover gnocchi. Yeah, because we're going to do a big one today, but you can do even like single serving gnocchi alla sorrentina, right? In a small uh, baking tray, you can also make the single serving. Oh no, garlic! Now wait, because once uh, it happens to me, I was about 14 years old, my aunt Zia Maria, she made the gnocchi, they forgot to take out the garlic from the tomato sauce. And because when gnocchi are cooked, they resemble a garlic, what happens? That I took one, I put in my mouth, and it was the cooked garlic. And it wasn't good. Did Zia Maria teach you how to make gnocchi? Certo, Albert. Certo. And I started with placing the gnocchi on a, on a towel. This was the beginner level. Before, like for two years, my role was just to place the gnocchi. And then after, I start to put my hands in the dough. But at the beginning, two years, I was just placing gnocchi. Now this is a pretty manageable amount of gnocchi for you to transfer into a pot. What I'm curious to see is you doing this one. Now, Arthur, knowing my family, you should know that we are not just two or three people. So think how Zia Maria could do when we were 20 people all together and she made gnocchi for 20 people. I had a very good uh, training on how I can uh, play with huge amount of food. And not just 20 to 30 people, 20 to 30 hungry Calabrians <laughs> is the difference. When a Calabrian person sits at the table, as we say in Italy, we honor the table.
What fantastic baked pasta. Gnocchi alla Sorrentina is a treasure of the Italian food. It's a comfort food, it's an elegant food, it's a food that makes you happy. It's perfection. Buon, buon appetito. appetito! I think this is the best dish to make to see if you've mastered gnocchi. If your gnocchi isn't good, It'll just turn into like a casserole of mashed potatoes. If your gnocchi are good, you can see the gnocchi. You can still see the whole gnocco. Yeah, each one is individual. Each one you can taste and bite, and yet it's still fluffy, dissolve in your mouth. Creamy, amazing. Did you know that the first recipe for gnocchi that used potatoes came from Campania? from Naples. Everything that is over the top comes from Naples. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you want to learn more about the history of gnocchi, we highly recommend checking out the book, The Discovery of Pasta by our good friend and food historian, Luca Cesari. He's written all about the incredible history of gnocchi. We'll put a link down below. It's an amazing book. If you try your gnocchi mastery at home, please send us a picture. Tag us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter at Pasta Grammar. Like this pasta grammarian who made the amazing Sicilian cauliflower pasta. I can't remember what it's called. What is it called? Pasta qui con la riminati, Arber. That one is amazing. Also check out our merch store down below. It helps support the show. Thanks for checking it out. Next one we will make mangia gnocchi. Mangia gnocchi. Mangia gnocchi. <laughs> We don't say goodbye, we keep eating. Someone's got to do something with this. Later that night. We're doing a little test to see if leftover gnocchi alla Sorrentina fries well. Maybe it's there also better. They fry good. Do we need to remake this video because this is like the best way to eat gnocchi? <laughs> Leftover gnocchi.